Hello guys and welcome back as opposed to a part 2 of the storage prep for the Mercedes. Uh, I, I think a few people quite enjoyed watching the first video that I did when I prepped the garage. Now I've got the car here. It's took us a week to get the thing here because every time I've tried getting it from the garage to here, it's rained and that's not what you want to do. So I'm going to go through a few things what I would promote as a mechanic to do to a car when leaving it for storage. A lot of it's self-explanatory but I know a lot of you guys uh, maybe haven't had cars like before to store them and something that may seem obvious to me may be quite of interest to you so here we go we'll spin it round first up like i've just said do not put the car in the garage wet that's key rule number one do not put it in wet and do not drive on the roads when there's been salt spread or it's damp when it's wet or anything like that so there's number one rule so first up naturally prepare the area that you're putting the car in so i've already been through it with these what i did i've seen the lady uh don't just look around the place and look for the obvious try and look for things that may happen in bad weather or whatever so this big unit here which was absolutely knackered um we took it down it was just balanced on that thin bar i've moved all these bits of wood off the shutter door so every time the lady who owns the house needs to be in for whatever reason they're not going to cause any damage to the car First thing I would say is fold in your mirrors, but my ZX in this thing, I can't believe I've got two cars in storage and none of them let you fold the mirrors in. Ridiculous. But anyways, I would say fold the mirrors in, but obviously I can't do it on this one. First up, get the car in to a good position. I normally wouldn't put something this close to a wall, but in this case, this garage is actually a lot smaller than it looks. Um, it's very wide, but not very long. And as you can see, the front barely... I've already done a test and obviously tests mean like i did the other day check the car actually fits in the storage before you commit to doing a deal with somebody because i'm not i nearly packed myself uh, last monday when i did the, the video to realize it's such a small car like a c-class sports coupe struggles to fit in here so i'm skeptical of my zx well i think it will just i'll have a discussion with somebody uh, a lad called chris uh, the other day three chris's i regularly speak to it's weird uh, but he was he did the dimension check and he said the zx is actually a slight bit shorter than than the c-class so happy days just in case that ever needs to come into here in the summer months when i'm when i'm not using it because this is my idea i'm going to probably use the c-class all over the summer for multiple things but the zx is still just going to be down to uh, shows and stuff like that you know so i'll be putting that in here as long as you keep the car in the storage as well try not to do a thing where you take your car out of storage say in march and never bring it back um until september because the person who you've done an agreement with might forget about it might start piling rubbish in and you get a nasty shock when you come back to use it and you find that you can't even get into the garage it just gets a bit awkward like me like this lady doesn't want any money the other guy who i've got the zx with he didn't really want money but i gave him some money for the kids but you've got an agreement but it's not a, an official contract so if you leave the garage empty all that time and you come back and there's a whole load of crap in there and you're like oh i need to put my car back in and they're like hmm tough kind of thing i've me, me me son's dropped the washing machine off my daughter's dropped a exercise bike off or something like that and you're like okay i've kind of just lost my storage here so if you've been given something regularly use it i would definitely say along the lines of regularly use it um what's up use it or lose it kind of thing so what my plan is yeah once the c class is out come the spring um i'm going to bring my zx and put it in here just while it's not being used just so that's something always there filling the gap that you've agreed to use anyways that's some of the ranting over uh first up is pre preparation of the car right number one i've got a car cover which i'm going to put over it's an extra large one it's probably going to be far too big for this but the only reason i'm putting it on is because there's, there's the cat you've, you've seen the cat around here just in case it decides to jump on the car scratch it or anything we're just going to put a cover over it but before we do that um, oh, and while I'm on is, I bought this stuff, decoration spray, because that other stuff was so rubbish. Um, that's done the trick. It's not totally blanked out, but it's enough just to stop any prying eyes. You know what I mean? They're, if they wanted the look, the garage is never shut right in the deck anyway, so they just need to shove the head under and see. But it's quite a nice curved driveway. It's very, very little people can actually see what's in here anyways. And normally she, she's parked her car further back. Um, because she knew I was coming so normally she has a further forward and it totally blocks access anyway not that for anybody nicking the car to any opportunists so first up what we're going to do is the, the obvious I'm just going to open the door just bear with us is pop the bonnet 
Reason why? Disconnect the battery. Now, come prepared. Now, do like simple things I've done here. I know now this car's in a position I cannot open the boot anymore. So I had the car cover and a few little tools in the back. So I had to remember to take them out. So number one rule is bring your tools. You might not think about it. Sounds stupid. But a 10 mil spanner for getting the battery terminal off. Sometimes when you remove a battery terminal, they don't always fully move out the way. A cover to cover the battery pole. There's some other things I've done with this particular car, which I'll just open the bonnet and show you. Some cars have the battery in the boot, for example. So if it was a battery in the boot job, I would have drove the car. And the reason the car's been driven in is a few reasons. Number one, clearly the battery's in the front. Number two, the charging point, if the battery goes flat, is at the front. And if the car needs to be jump-started, it's at the front. But with this particular car, I've already shown you this week in this week's vlogs, that the um, pollen filter assembly sits on top of here. So I've removed that. That is the red battery cover, which goes over the positive one, which was here, which I've removed just in case I need access, which is just there in the centre. Just little bits so you can just be bish-bash-bosh, in and done. You know, so... I've got the cover off, I'll be faffing on with that now, struggling on, so that's off, so it's just a case 10 mil, off with that, you don't close the bonnet all the way, I would just put it on the latch, so we know the battery's disconnected, but before we get to that point, there's a few things I want to do, now, normally I would say, do not lock your car in storage, but with this one being out of my hands, not for the car being nicked, for opportunists, so, first up, get the car positioned, because once you start disconnecting the battery is when you start um, having issues with uh, not being able to move it and stuff. So, first up, number one rule, if it's a manual or an automatic, chock the wheel. This garage slopes badly to the back. So, I've got this under, just so it's not putting pressure on anything. Normally, I would say leave them in neutral, handbrake off, but this is an automatic, so in park. Always handbrake off, so can't stress that one enough, and I can't stress how many people forget that one. Handbrake off. Automatic in park. You can't really take the key out and a lot of them in neutral. And if it's a manual, naturally in neutral. So I'm going to go at the car first. There's a few things we need to do before you disconnect the battery to be able to lock it. So first up, well, first up, I'm going to put this thing back on the door. Bear with us. Right, I've stupidly parked the car slightly towards one side. That's something that's what I'm going to tell you. Get it in the right position. It's only because the cat goes down the left side. So I've left a bit more room. So I've kind of jammed myself up a little bit here. But it's enough to get in. So first thing, naturally, pop the bonnet, obviously. Now in this car in particular, it's got the glass roof. And I'm a little bit concerned about, um, obviously, anything coming through. This isn't going to stop anything by any means. But what I am going to do, switch on the ignition... It's just pull the blinds across. Purely to stop the sun. Secondly, they're just fabric. But if something shatters through the roof, it just means no glass goes all over the car. Probably not going to do so at all. But I just thought that's a good idea. Shut those. I'm good. I don't know why. Don't ask us why I do this. Just helps. Just to stop any light getting in or anything stupid like that. I just put the sun visors down. I don't know why I do it. I mainly did it when when the when the outside. It just stops a bit of UV getting into the car because this place has got a clear roof. I don't even know if that stops uh, UV. So first up, just do a quick check round the car. Is everything off? Sounds stupid, but heaters off, radio off, any kind of lighting equipment, anything on auto is off. Now what I'm going to do with this car because it's got hasn't got a proper key is press the lock button. So I don't know if you noticed that. If you look at that in the corner. It's gone down. So now it's only the driver's door open. So if you don't do that, you've only got one door barrel on this driver's door to be able to lock it. So now, we switch the ignition off. Obviously, into park. Ignition off. Key out. Happy days. Once the key is out, it's probably good practice just to engage the steering lock. As so. Some cars, you've just got to wiggle them. Just so we know the steering lock's engaged. In park. Obviously, handbrake off. And these few little checks. Then, I'm just going to jump out, obviously, shut the door. But with this particular car, so with this particular car, if you note, you've got to dismantle the key just to get the blade out. Because you've got your lock and barrel here, the boot is just a switch. And on the passenger side door, obviously, older cars won't be like this. I'm saying older cars, this is 20 year old. Passenger door hasn't got it. So, obviously, as you can see, Passenger's door's locked, the boot will be locked. Not anybody could get in there. 
Um, so what we're going to do is just, just manually lock the driver's door. And bear in mind, you've got to remember that when you disconnect the battery, you've had your last chance with this. So, we'll lock the door. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Let's get the blade in. Always check that they're free. Check I'm doing it the right way. You can see the little inside there. That's it. Locked. So there we go. So the next step, disconnect the battery, obviously. So I'll just get on there. I'll just get the spanner. And I'll show you just how I do things. It, it, it might sound ridiculous, but there is a bit of a set order and a routine to doing it. Because if you disconnect the, the battery first, the central locking wouldn't work. And you couldn't get into the boot to lock it. Them little switches on these, you physically actually kind of get them down unless the remote central locking does it. Plus, you don't want to have your alarm triggering, which you will do it if you do it other ways. So I'll just get the spanner and I'll show you with the battery. Right, guys, my dad's just turned up to give us a hand with the car cover because he needs to pick us up, obviously. But one little trick, this has nothing to do with storing your car, which I just thought would be interesting. Now, I've done this. On the receipt of the last time I filled up this car, Obviously, November 22, it's Shell for V-Power. It was 170.9. Now, all I'm going to do, just for entertainment purposes, is I'm going to put this on the passenger seat. So, when I next come to you... Well, yeah, obviously, I'll be viewing, visiting the car regularly. But just so when I come to use it in April, we'll see. Put your bets, guys. What do you think that'll be in April 23? It's just a bit silly, but I just thought we'll give it a try. So since I've opened the door, relock them, and we'll do the lock of the door, and we'll get the battery disconnected. But have a guess what you think that will be in April. Will it be more? Will it be less? It'd be nice to see who gets the closest guess. So obviously the next step, battery disconnected, as you can see. But like I've said, this would have been a right carry-on if I hadn't have thought about it. I would have to take all the pollen filter box off, the terminals. So as you can see... I've just put a cover over it, because obviously that's just sort of hovering like that. There's nothing really else you can do with it. But just if it drops, it's not going to make contact. I've got a million old spanners lying around, so I'm just going to leave this on there. So when I come to have it, it's there. Because what you tend to find when you come to these cars, like where you put your cars into storage, is you turn up unprepared. And you turn up wanting to do X, Y, and Z, and you end up getting naff all done, because you forget all the simple little things. So there we go. So there, up to now, what we've done, handbrake off. In park or neutral if it was not a, a, a manual. Doors are locked. Batteries disconnected. I was debating doing a few other little things, but I don't think I'll bother. But obviously it's all locked up. And now with the bonnet situation, don't close it properly. Because remember, if you have any problems with for some reason a door getting seized, it's easier just to be able to get it underneath the bonnet. So do not slam it closed, just leave it on the latch. As so, like that. And that's it. Really, the wheels are chopped up. Now we just need to get the car cover over. There'd probably be a bit of a laugh seeing this thing because it's for an extra large car. Um, but we'll see. We'll get this unravelled. Right, and don't laugh because there's method to the madness. So obviously the car cover on. Yes, it's an extra large cover. I thought it would be a lot bigger, actually. So it's covered up. Mainly the cat comes in and out. I don't think it's going to really be bothered. Probably act as a bit of a den or something for it. I don't know. But it's not going to do any major kind of uh, harm. There's a little bit in that corner. I might pull it down. Yeah, it's the same as the other, really. So that's on. But why this is on? Number one, if anything falls, I'm hoping this may act as what it hits first. Obviously, there's a lot of places exposed. That bar, there's this. That's just the box anyway. Something just for around the windscreen area, again, for that bar. Uh, a heavyish bit of wood. It'll not do any harm, just because, obviously, the garage door isn't always closed properly, just in case any wind whips up and blows the cover off. So that's pretty much it, really. I mean... There's not a great deal else you can do. Clearly, close the doors, come regularly, check on them, start them up, all the rest of it. But beauty with this car cover, I'll only need to partially pull it up to connect the battery and open the door. So there we go, really. I mean, that's as much as I can say. It's in, it's done. We'll put the doors down. We'll check it actually goes, because I want to just double-check first while I'm in here that nothing is too close. So we'll put the doors down. And just check ready with the stop button in case it gets too close but it seems to be good times it's close it's close but I'm just going to check when it comes up it doesn't lift the cover if it does I'm going to have to get something to just prop it 
think I might just get something to keep it more tighter underneath, under there. But there we go. All I've done there is just propped a bit of tile just underneath, just to keep it tight so it doesn't catch the back edge of the garage door. But that's it for, for now, guys. I just thought it'd be a quick video showing you the, the, I was going to say the ML, the C-Class going away for the winter. I just hope we don't have any problems. I don't hope we don't get any major storms. But let's face it, it's going to be better than it being stuck outside. This car needs to be saved. You do not get any 2002 Mercedes. If you haven't already done so this week, take a look on my Facebook page, Car at Garage Northeast, and you'll see the, the pictures of the underneath of this car. It is like brand new. Not just new. I'm talking like a one, two-year-old car underneath when I've pulled the trays down to do the fuel filter. It's been fully land guarded. That'll obviously help towards any damp in here. But that's it. Let us know what you think. Do you think I've got a good little storage unit? Do you think I've got a good setup here? I would love, I'd love to be able to get some of this stuff moved out of the way for next year. And I think I could fit the ZX in just two cars side by side. I, I think I could just manage that. In fact, I think I could between that space there in that space there, maybe. I think I could be pushing it, it would take some measurements, but it's a good backup, and it's also a good place to store the ZX in the summer when it's not being used. So, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, let us know what you what you think. Any Anything I've missed, anything you would do differently. If you've enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you've already done so, hit the subscribe, and I'll catch you soon.